Good evening um, to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. It's um, 7 o'clock on September 20th. Um, first want to um, state what we're here for. Um, Fred and Rose Weisa Berwick and Carl and Angela Berwick, co-owners of 194 Lower Road, Deerfield, Mass. These applicants are requesting consideration for a special use permit for a 2,706 square foot, four bedroom, four room bed and breakfast at 194 Lower Road to be owner occupied and in compliance with all building, health and fire codes. So I guess at this time, um, if anybody has any presentations or comments to make about the hearing, the board would like to hear them. Yes, sir. You identify I'm yourself. So, yeah. Yes. I don't know if I yes, if you yeah, come, come to the table. Yeah, have a seat. And I need your fingerprints. <laughs> <laughs> Would you state your name again, please? My name is George Berwick, or Carl George Berwick, as I'm listed on the application. I go by George. Um, I'm one of the co-owners, I guess, of 194 Lower Road. Um, my parents brought the property um, in an effort to, would like to move closer to us. That was the primary goal. Um, they're um, now in their probably third stage of retirement. Uh, they keep retiring and keep doing more things. Um, so they're basically both retired professors. Um, I'm sorry they couldn't be here. They're on a trip to Germany right now. Uh, they do research and, um, and basically lectures and, and um, are currently doing uh, final work on some books. Um, and then they wanted to send their best and say, they're sorry they weren't here. Um, so the property of 194 Lower was, um, presents my parents with an opportunity uh, to live less than 10 minutes from us. Um, that was the primary goal, and also uh, close to the academic resources of the area. Um, and then they wanted to set up an Airbnb initially uh, in the house, and I, um, my wife and I own a B&B down in Hatfield, and uh, we discouraged against them doing the Airbnb route uh, because we wanted them to be kind of above board, have the um, proper permits, fire code, health inspections, everything that was required to run a B&B because &B, uh, their intention was to run more than one room upstairs because the upstairs has uh, four bedrooms and with bath. Uh, the downstairs is um, fitted for um, kitchen and uh, bathroom. Um, so their, in their intention is to basically occupy the lower level of the house and then operate the four rooms as a bed and breakfast. Um, on our end, our expertise is just as guidance. Um, we're, we operate our bed and breakfast, but we're there just to kind of help them out with certain things. Um, they'll be running the operation. Uh, we're there to, if they have questions um, or need uh, cook assistance because they are older, uh, they mainly just want to enjoy the, the guests uh, as they've enjoyed staying with us and doing the same thing. Um, and so, uh, I guess that's kind of the, the long and short of it. I don't know if there's any questions I can answer specifically to that. Carl, how long have you and your wife had your bed and breakfast? Um, we've owned uh, about five years now. Five years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any uh, diagrams, prints of the house, or uh, with me? No. Okay. Um, I didn't know that we were to bring some, but I could mm, furnish okay. some. Um, how, uh, those four rooms. Um, how are you? How is the house set for parking? Um, there are. Um, it, uh, there's. Two, uh, there's a two car garage below. Um, two cars can fit in front of the two car garage, mm -hmm. uh, so the owner could park, park in the garage. And two cars, I guess parking could sit in front. Mm -hmm. There's a spot to the, um, to the left of the garage, and then there's another spot on the right where you kind of pull up against the house. Um, since the road is longer, uh, there's also opportunity to put maybe one or two spots along the driveway coming in. Um, kind of like pull out parking. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe there's enough area okay. to kind That's of That's why it kind of helped parking. to have a diagram of yeah. the, the layout and all right. to be able to assess parking right. availability and that kind of thing. Any other 
questions or comments? Or? I have a question. I may be confused or missed something here, but you're operating a bed and breakfast in Hatfield where you live, and you're going to operate this one? You're, you're, you are or aren't a resident of 194? Or I am a co-owner of 194. My parents are the residents. Okay. And they'll be operating it as a bed and breakfast. We're merely helping them out with their this project for them. So I don't know if there's uh, how I can answer that. I don't know, Mr. Chairman. I, I don't know. Would we feel more comfortable hearing directly from the owners? I, I don't. Yeah. I seem a little bit. your your co-owner yeah of the yeah, business or the property of the property I have a question um, has this been inspected by a fire chief um, no it has not we haven't we wanted to get find out if we are eligible for a permit and then to see what needed to be done next uh, we went talked to the building inspector as per the application process and then we didn't, there were no other further steps outlined on the application. How many, I'm, I'm not clear how many people you plan on putting in there? Um, if it's four bedrooms, so I, the ideal would be uh, eight guests and then my parents would live below. Uh, if you look at our zoning bylaws, um, 2243, mm -hmm. you're only allowed a total of six. Six guests. Not six guests, six people. Okay, six people. Right. And I'm not clear, Mr. Decker, you probably know more about it than I do, but uh, it says two occupants plus a household. So if you have three people in the household, mm -hmm. you're only still allowed two guests, only two total two guests. I'm not sure on that. My luck goes way back, a long way. You know, it was set up basically to keep people from packing the students in. Yeah. Back years ago and uh, I think it's a, one of the exceptions is that they're related by blood or marriage right mm -hmm. and you know that helps with the number but, but I have a couple of questions for now you're Carl George mm -hmm. and Angela is your wife that's correct okay and Fred and Rosewood are your, your parents correct so but what you want to what the application is to, to have four units, four bedrooms to rent out. Correct. And and this is going to be owner occupied. Mm -hmm. So you're really going to be there supervising when those rooms are, are rented, or your parents are going to be there. My parents will be, and when in their absence, we would be. Yeah, but I mean, you just can't walk away from them and let somebody right. else do it. Um, now, the downstairs, does it have a bedroom on the first floor? Uh, it has a, uh, a basically an open plan basement right now, or a lower level. It's partially finished. There is an area for a, a, an additional bath, and um, it was stubbed out initially for a kitchen. So the, the desire was to set that up as an apartment area for them. So, so the lower level would be like another apartment? Yeah, that was the, the intention. Is there an exterior door out of the basement? Correct. There's two. There's actually more than two because there's you have two egress going out the back side of the, the house, and then there's uh, actually currently there's three doors going out into the garage. So a total of five doors down below. I'm not really familiar where your house is, other than it's in, on Lower Road in West Airfield. Right. Can you tell me what it's close to? Um, it's uh, would be close to the um, I think uh, I can't remember the farmer's name now. Savage has a, uh, a, a larger plot of land um, right around the corner from us, where um, we own the tip. That the, this property owns a, a, the tip of that um, property. Um, I assume that yeah, there would be a map uh, of our property in the application. Were well, you talking about the? You're talking about the dorsal farm, and, yeah. and where John Savage Sr. used to live? Yes. And, and which There's, side of the road are you on? Across the road from the hound down and on up closer to Greenfield. Okay. Yeah. Right by the Oxbow. But it's closer to Greenfield. I just don't know where it is.
What kind of signage will you be using? Um, would you be using? We would be uh, hopefully just using a sign basically the size that's recommended by the town. So nothing more than I think it's 430 inch square. So you're going to have a separate kitchen for your parents and a, a small bedroom on the lower level of the house? Yeah. And then on the first floor, are there living room, dining room, kitchen? There's a living, dining room, kitchen, and then we're going to block off the kitchen so that it's not used by guests. But what you're also asking, basically, in addition to the bed and breakfast, is you're actually putting in another kitchen mm -hmm. and you're... Uh, actually putting in a, a second unit. Mm. Okay. The way I understand it, am I understanding it wrong? No, that's correct. Mr. Chairman, I, someone asked the question, the fire chief did return uh, information here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we all saw that, or if you'd like me to pass it back, his uh, concerns. Yeah, I did not see that. Would you like me to read yes, it aloud? Sure, that yeah. would be great. Was this at the, at the this table? This is at the you table. Down? Yeah. Yes, and I did. Uh, this is from uh, Chief uh, Darren Melnick. He uh, responded to the request of comments here. His comments included: he needs a list of four or five rooms used, not including the bathroom. He said no more than five rooms. Uh, three was smoke and seal alarm inspection done by the fire inspector to make sure they're up to code. That was his comments. Um, Is there anything from the building inspector there? Uh, the building inspector comments, yes. It was okay. It wasn't worth it. Okay. Building inspector comments, Kyle J. Scott, June 28th. I have no objection to this moving forward type special permit for bed and breakfast. Planning board says no concerns. None from the board of assessors either. Pretty much all that's in here. Here's some mapping and some pictures of the house. Perfect. Mr. Decker, if you're concerned about this best, I can send that file down. We need some more time to look through this stuff. And was there any other correspondence around? Uh, this, uh, I, I went through um, his uh, other uh, similar type issues, other bed and breakfast permits. We know the only about thing that. Yeah. that I noted in here that uh, on the one that was granted was it was granted to the to the person, not to the property. So it's mm -hmm. non transferable. Right. Yeah. That's our understanding as well. But it has to be written that way. Mm -hmm. If we let it go on the property we have to stipulate in this meeting that it stays with the owner. When the owner sells a property, it has to 
be dropped or it can stay with the property, which means the next person comes in there and can put the bed and breakfast in and we have no say. Am I correct, Mr. Decker? Mm -hmm. Yes, we attended a lecture last year on it. <laughs> so not transferable, basically. That if you, if you don't, if it's not restricted, they could build a 100-room motel. As long as it's not a dollar store. <laughs> I don't care about, you know, I can't count it. Third rail. Um, what types of third rail? Okay, thank you. You got a lot of other people here, Frank. Why don't you yep. some seats? Yeah, um, while we're lo looking through all this information, are there any neighbors or abutters that would like to comment? Uh, any other concerns from anybody? Yes, ma'am? If you could come up to the table, I think it would be easier. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Rita Detweiler. My husband and I live at 200 Lower Road, and the driveway abuts the side of our property, so it's a long driveway. And uh, We're not opposed to the idea of a, the bed and breakfast, but I did want to raise some concerns. Um, I think in listening to the presentation, one would be the parking um, and that the parking not be allowed to be along the driveway. Um, the field that is um, before you get to the home um, is actually um, not, uh, I shouldn't say that there was proof, but at the time that the house was built, the house had to be sited not on that field because there were um, reports from other neighbors that historical remains of ancient burials had been there. So that's why the building couldn't be on that property. It had to be over the hill on Phil. So I think anything that affects that field really has to be considered. I think anything that would be uh, certainly digging in the dirt or even parking on that I think would be a problem. Uh, the driveway itself can be a problem. Um, I believe that the strip of land is about 25 feet and the way the driveway is situated, it's very close to our property line. In some places, it's like two feet. In some places, it's a little bit more like five feet uh, from our property line. And it's actually quite close to a culvert. A culvert comes from across the street, and then the, the driveway comes across and is quite close to the culvert. So snow has been a problem, and I'm sure we could work this out with the neighbors. But the previous neighbors, it was a problem, and it the snow kept coming up onto our property and broke our fence several times. Um, from our side, we probably need to remove some branches, again, so it doesn't hang over their driveway. But I don't know if it's possible if there is a change in usage for that driveway to be either expanded on one side so it isn't just so close to our property line. But I think parking along the driveway would be a problem for us. Um, I think another issue is the septic tank. I don't know if that has been looked at, but I think if you're moving from a family use of a septic to a more use from you know many more people, it was my understanding, and again, I wasn't, I'm not privy to what are the rules, but um, it is quite close to a lot of wetlands. So I'd like to be sure that the Conservation Commission has looked at that and determined that the septic is the proper distance from uh, the water, because something that was, I, I think, at one point considered a seasonal water is really not seasonal. It's really there the whole time. It's, it's, there's the river, and then there's this pond, almost like that is closer to the property than the river. So I think that's a consideration. Um, and I think finally, uh, at one point, I don't know if there's a barrier that has to be maintained from the river um, where you can't um, disturb vegetation. But that certainly hasn't been maintained. So um, it was that way before the house was built. But since then, there's been mowing and cutting and things like that. So I think that would be a consideration also just for the, um, the beauty of the property. I mean, it is right along the river. It has a lot of river front frontage. Mm -hmm. um, but those are our concerns. But other than that, you know, we hope to be good neighbors. Um, and it is a beautiful site. Um, I think if it is owner-occupied, um, if that is expected, and if the elderly couple is away, that the expectation is that someone would be staying in the house and not just yeah. coming and being that sure somebody's there and then leaving because there can be a lot of problems with people. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be sure somebody's managing them because we're the ones who would be closest to them. And any lights 
you know, would also affect us. I don't know if they're, I'm sure you can't ask people to turn their lights off at night, but sometimes lights have been left on all night long, and that is a little hard because, you know, we enjoy the, the darkness and the stars. Any questions for me? Oh, actually, I do have one question, too, about the, um, the fire chief. Um, I want to, I don't know if there's, a, have they determined that emergency vehicles can access that house? Because it is set way back. And when the house was built, there was a telephone pole that was over at our neighbor's house. But since then, that telephone pole has been moved. And I don't know if large, um, like something like a fire truck could actually make the turn and not get into the culvert and pass the, pass the, um, the telephone pole. Hmm. And again, I think the sighting of the sign would be an issue. It couldn't come closer on our side because the driveway is already almost up on our property line. But those are questions I have. But again, I just ask them for your consideration. Okay. With vehicles parked on the side of the driveway, fire truck getting down there would be difficult. Yes. Yeah. And they'd have to park on what really is, you know, a, a burial ground. Because yeah. uh, again, it had been reported that there were three skulls that had been found um, when the house was originally being built, that was brought forward to the zoning board. Hmm. Was there originally a zoning permit on it? It was actually a very odd time when that came through. There was a period of time um, 11 years ago when I don't think you had a building person here and um, it was developed by Mark, I forget his name, he's also doing the, the project over here by Sugarloaf. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah, I know. What you're talking right. about there's a whole folder, right. green folder over there that's got the original building permits, et cetera, in it. That's right. In front of you, Bernie. Right. This he one originally right. got the no, permit no, the from green Greenfield. Room. Oh, this one. Yep. Yeah, he got the Would permit like from that? Greenfield. For I don't need it, but I'm saying the information she's talking about is in there because I know the septic design is in there. The septic design was a concern, but this was originally granted for a driveway and I think a basement, but it came through Greenfield because it was, I don't know the history, but there was a period of time when you didn't have somebody here, like a two-week period, and it came through Greenfield into Deerfield that way. And as a matter of fact, we weren't even informed about it. Um, we kind of found out about it when there started to be activity on the property, and I had to come down and figure out, you know, is there a permit given here or something? Um, but um, as I say, we hope to be good neighbors. I just want to be sure that some of the concerns are addressed. So I think especially the septic is a legitimate concern. Um, if you're increasing the amount of usage, and as I say, certainly respect for the field and not to allow um, parking along that, that would be important too. You are licensed, or well, you have a building a license? Yes, somehow. Contractor? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's septic, the, the, when they figure it in, does it figure it in for the number of rooms for yeah. the septic? Bedrooms, close by bedrooms. Number of bedrooms? Yeah. yeah. Um, again, I think it's important to see if the where those wetlands really are relative to the home. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else uh, like to comment or have any, have any questions? Or? I'm Rob Detweiler, through the Low Road, you know, just spoke. Um, so first let me just say, I have a hearing problem. I have an appointment tomorrow at 8.30 to get the hearing set, but I haven't heard much of what's going on tonight. So I'll just put that out front. So for repeating stuff, excuse me. So um, you and I have talked, and we like the idea of a bed and breakfast. We've thought about it ourselves, and that house lends itself beautifully to that sort of function because it's got beautiful views and like multiple levels. And it's uh, ideal in some ways. Um, but to me, um, a bed and breakfast means there's somebody lives there and rents out some of their rooms in their house to other people. And I've been to, we have two new neighbors, um, these folks and the folks that were in the Stankowskis two over. Um, and I've heard folks at this location, but I've never met anybody. I've gone down there several times, but nobody's ever there. So I'm not sure what that's about. Could be timing, I don't know. So, but what it means to me is, and I'm hearing tonight a little bit, is that uh, the folks that 
are going to be the owner residents, the resident owners, don't live there right now. Uh, maybe they will at some point. So I understand that they live in California. My question is, what percentage of the time will the owner residents actually be resident in this house that they're going to rent out to other people? Is it really a bed and breakfast or just a business scheme? And I have no trouble if there's like neighbors that I know, we can talk to, we see each other over the fence and so forth, and they're running out of space. But I haven't seen that yet. And that gives me pause and concern. Um, I think there were other issues Rita already covered for me. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Should we ask Carl to respond to that? Sure. And Carl, can you um, address that about uh, yeah, are your parents kind of in, in transit? Are they going to be traveling a lot, or are they, are, are they relocating here from California? They're in the process of relocating. Um, my, my mother actually lived, uh, when we took over the house on August 10th, um, she was uh, stayed at the house up until the time that she had to go to Germany. Uh, so she left from the house to go to, on her trip. Uh, so she, that's why she hasn't been there. But she was there for the first um, I think week, two weeks that we had taken occupancy, or she took occupancy, and um, uh, the, basically they'll be, uh, they're still very active, so they're in and out quite, I don't want to say quite a bit, but they're, <coughs> they're definitely still traveling. Um, on the times that they're away, I mean, you know, obviously there would be somebody at the house, and they, I think they're the overall, they only want people staying there, I think, on the weekends, so like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or some, you know, not 24-7, seven, seven days a week kind of thing. It's, it's meant mainly for the weekends for them. Um, and uh, uh, so they are, we're, they're in the process of moving things here. Uh, they're closing down. Um, they had another, uh, my mother is closing down some houses in Germany. She has a, her, her aunt uh, passed away a few years ago. And so um, they're, she's German. And so she's um, basically um, kind of reducing family property that she has in Germany. And um, is basically bringing things, shipping containers going to be, she's putting together items that she'll be bringing to, to the house. Um, so that's going to be in the next, I think, two weeks. Okay. So will this be their primary residence, or are they going to be splitting their time between California and here? They're going to be, it's going to be still kind of a secondary residence, but they're going to homestead from the house. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but they also still have a house in Germany that they mm -hmm. visit, not Continue. I mean, it's just throughout the year. It's kind mm -hmm. of spotty. Any estimate on what percentage of time they'll be here versus Germany? And, and so are they out of California now? or? Uh, no, they still live in California. They still have their California house, but mm -hmm. that's um, right now they're transitioning out of that house. Mm -hmm. They're basically trying to reduce their size, and their, mm -hmm. uh, their goal was to move towards us. Mm -hmm. So um, and in, the, in an effort to do that, they also wanted to um, be close to us by living in Deerfield. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, so how much time, if they're, they're so presumably they're oh, still going to travel? Time, I would say their, their travel time is probably, um, I'd still say it's pretty active. It's like between, probably about 25%, so mm -hmm. they'll probably be around 75% of the time. That they'd be here? Yeah. In different, okay. And if they weren't here, then you and, and or your wife would be here? Yeah. Presumably would. if you have a business there, you might be splitting up and wanting right. to be here, wanting to be there. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yes, ma'am, you can come up. Hi, I'm Luann Simmons, um, 202 Lower Road. Just to expand a little bit on the what Rita mentioned about the Indian burial grounds located on that site, um, a concern that let's say the bed and breakfast is allowed to happen and folks stay there and all that, that's wonderful. Um, even if there isn't gonna be any more building or disturbing of that property or anything like that, that's great. But the people that are staying there should be aware of this area too. They should somehow, there should be something in place where the guests are told that you don't go over there. You don't, you know, you're not running around playing baseball or horseshoes or 
I mean, truly, it's an area that should be just left as is, pristine, and um, because it's very inviting. I mean, I've been down there. It's beautiful. This is all a beautiful place. But that area that is undisturbed um, is very inviting. It's just basically grass right now, and it's, it's undisturbed. So it looks like a great place to set up a chair or a badminton net or something like that. So anyway, I just wanted to expand a little bit on that, that whoever is on that property should be aware what that area is and really respect it. Okay. I'm not familiar with the, the plot we're talking about, but is this mowed land now or is it just... That like I'm not 100% sure about mm -hmm. what, they, what was allowed and what wasn't. When mm -hmm. I was last down there, it was in August, just before the sale went on and um, the sale transferred. And the grass was quite, quite tall. Mm -hmm. It was probably a foot or more tall. It looks more like a, um, something that maybe gets, I don't even know if it gets mowed once a year, maybe it does. It's like a hayfield kind of thing instead but, of I mean, a lawn. Yeah, it's not, it wasn't um, a manicured, it's not a manicured lawn. Mm -hmm. It's left mm -hmm. more natural. Right. Um, I don't know if they're allowed to cut it mm -hmm. once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. When I saw it, it, it was about a foot tall. Mm -hmm. But it's okay. a nice, flat, pretty, pretty spot that, mm -hmm. you know, would be great to set up just about anything. But mm -hmm. Right. Anyway. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. According to the loan docs that we received, um, the, the land does carry with it a, um, a limited protection to itself. Um, it supposedly, I have not found it, but there's a, some sort of plaque commemorating the area. Um, uh, the stipulation in the um, and the limited use of that area is that um, one is not supposed to dig uh, two feet down um, beyond that. Mm -hmm. um, I have no intention of digging, but just so that it's clear, it does state in that limited use that that's there. So mowing is, um, according to what we got from the previous owners, it's not an issue. It has been cleared a couple times. Um, uh, there were wildflowers growing or planted there at one point. Um, which were right now we mowed down just to kind of clear out for the winter so that we could reseed. Um, so the intention is basically to keep it as a natural landscape area, not to put anything on it. But the, um, the stipulation in the limited use does not stipulate really anything. It just has no digging or building of structures. Mm -hmm. <coughs> right, so no foundations or anything. No foundations, like yeah. Right. Okay, question. Thank no. you. Oh. Sir. Yeah. So you closed on this property on August 10th? Yes. And you filed for this permit prior to closing? Um, we were curious about, um, wondering, we were wondering basically, we looked at the property with the intention of uh, So this doing is like an investment property for you then? Uh, for myself, not, I'm, I'm only part of it because of my, of basically my parents are older and it's just an inheritance issue. So, uh, but my parents are the ones that are basically purchased it. And, uh, so you're, you're not an owner? I'm still confused. Do okay. you own the property or not? <laughs> I own part of the property. So I, are I've you contributed. On the deed? I, what's that? Yes, are you I on am. The deed? Okay. Yeah. So all, for all intents and purposes, yes, I am a co-owner. I am a part owner in it. Um, uh, we did provide funding or down payment for the the property, and the intention when we were looking for this property was that it could hopefully be something that could be like a, a money earning. Uh, uh, mortgage covering kind of business. Okay. Yeah. How many feet is the driveway? Um, across from no. the from the road. Lake from the road, sir. From the road. Yeah. I believe I, I don't have the measurement in front of me right now, but I believe it's um, probably close to 100 feet. I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's probably at least twice that. Yeah. Two. The length of the driveway has got to be at least 250, if not more feet. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I think I mowed that property for Mr. Einstein about 20 years ago. And I will say, I'm sorry, but, uh, mm -hmm. I just want to say when any truck comes in, like the rate we're finding a truck or, or a safety truck, they have to back down the driveway because once they're down there, they can't turn around. 
in a truck that size. So that's why I was curious about um, fire trucks. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a concern. You know, around fire, ambulance, if you have eight guests, you know, um, on top of two elderly people that are retirement age, you know, you get four cars down there, plus the owner's cars. They need to get an ambulance down there. You know, I think that that's a concern. Another field into consideration. It's a, it's a one-way driveway, right? So you can't have... Ma'am, I think, it, I think we're supposed to ask people to come up to the microphone if they're going to speak. Janice Holabird. I'm at 191 Lower Road, right right across from the driveway. And it just, it's just, I just wanted to note that you can't have a car going in and coming out at the same time. So that could be interesting. Mm. But as far as having a bed and breakfast there or something, I have no objections. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yes. Any other comments or questions? Yes, sir. Hi there. Hi there. Uh, David Goff, 201 Lower Road. I guess. Uh, not opposed to a bed and breakfast. I do have a question. Is uh, Does a permit um, allow any other business use? I'm thinking river recreation. Once you do a permit that opens it to business, can you expand on that? Is it, uh, or is it limited to just a bed and breakfast? It's a, it's a obviously tubing is a, a big, um, you know, thing for the Deerfield River and it is hard to have access. So <laughs> I, I'm just wondering about, you know, f future opportunities. Um, it's a, Perfect river access, you know, probably giving people ideas here, but um, usually happens. <laughs> um, but I'm just wondering, what, you know, what limits do you, you know, does a business use permit allow, and, and where does it? Uh, it's not res it's not business. It's a residential commercial, okay. uh, residential agriculture. Okay. Which limits it, which means it can only be used for. And here is stipulation on uh, commercial. It's a bed and breakfast for the uh, agricultural residential has to be a special permit and it's okay. only limited to what it's limited for. Okay. So, so it, you couldn't put a boating ramp out there or any of that stuff as far as I understand. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. All right. Well, that's my question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Carl, any other concerns you want to bring forward or? No, okay. Okay. I guess we'll need a few minutes to talk about what we've heard. And all right. Um, I think your um, thoughts about um, having uh, Fred and Rushbita here would make mm -hmm. me feel better, as well as seeing some uh, um, to scale drawings for parking. That seems like it's kind of an issue. Um, does the septic, um, if it's by bedroom, and these were all originally bedrooms, that should cover it, right? Unless they're adding the apartment. They're adding another bedroom, another apartment. They're adding another mm -hmm. another bedroom. I mean, Rich, I, yeah. that's not our problem. Yeah. The septic, when the, is it, it's sized when yeah. the building. Well, we, you'd have to see what their septic Plans are size for first. Mm -hmm. okay. Like a four bedroom, I look through it. Okay. But that would be taken up by the health department. Right, mm -hmm. and the building inspector, I would assume. Yeah, I can't see, so. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, have I don't know if it was that clear. Was that clear in the application that they were going to add a bedroom to make a downstairs apartment? Because I didn't see that no, in their application for the special mm -hmm. permit. Mm -hmm. But he did testify to the fact that they were going to add a bedroom downstairs in the basement. Is that correct? Yes. Um, right now. Uh, no. There's four bedrooms upstairs, and so my parents intend to use the bedrooms upstairs, but they would like to finish the downstairs as an apartment for themselves. With a bedroom? With a bedroom, yes. That's an additional unit, yeah. mm -hmm. and the, uh, I'm not sure what the frontage requirements are there. There's not much frontage, is there? 
Um, there's frontage all along. There's the there's another part of uh, another parcel attached to that property that makes up the frontage. So the road is just a small portion of it. There's the two houses that are next door, and then there's frontage. There's a that goes usable down. frontage that you can actually access. The yeah, there's there that is not there, but there's just the the curve in the road that's the frontage that continues down. I have to plead some ignorance here about bed and breakfast. Bed and breakfast with a second kitchenette. Is that what you're saying? Your parents are going to have a kitchen of their own downstairs for their own apartment, and then there's going to be one for the four bedrooms? Yes, they would like to have like a small... That sounds like, like an apartment to me, not a, not a bed and breakfast. The downstairs? Either one. You can't have... That's, I believe, Mr. Decker, that is illegal to have an apartment in a single family dwelling because he had, we had one taken out in town already. Oh, okay. Right, so that would be like making it a two family in the, in the agricultural district. That would have to be in the downtown district to have it make right. it a two family. So if you just, they would, if they finish the basement though with an extra bathroom and use the kitchen upstairs. The kitchen would be the, the issue. That yeah. Would be the issue. yeah. Right. So if one just had a bathroom downstairs and for just another room for them, so they'd be a little bit separate. But they could use the kitchen upstairs. That wouldn't be an issue. But if there's a bedroom, that's an additional bedroom, and the septic is only only has four. That's mm -hmm. what the house is sized for, correct, Rich? The, 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 the documents in there. here, you can yeah. take yeah. a look. There's also some correspondence yeah, with the conservation. That's so. look at it. I'd be interested to know know that because there is the downstairs does have st it's all plumbed out for another toilet and another shower. The issue is so, not the. Not the toy, not that, but the, the septic. Bedroom. Right, bedrooms. bedrooms. And if one left it, let's say, as a four bedroom and just had the downstairs as a, as a finished area, could one do that? Or didn't use four bedrooms upstairs and just left it as a three bedroom upstairs and we didn't use one of the bedrooms? Kitchens, the controlling four bedroom dwelling. Yeah. Four bedroom dwelling, yeah, it's clear on the septic. Four bedroom so. septic design. So you technically couldn't, without modifying the septic, you couldn't have the bedroom. Okay. In the basement. Are you really tied into having four rooms that you can rent out? Uh, it was just a in in our I guess in our initial vision. Yes, I'm not tied to it. If I if we are not allowed to have four and we're limited to three, that would be fine as well. All right. Another question: Why four bedrooms? Um, the four bedrooms upstairs are, are um, each have their own bedroom and attached bath, and so that was what was attractive to the house to begin with, because you wouldn't have to make any modifications. Some bed and breakfasts that we've looked at, they add on the bathrooms as a, a second piece to the whole house, and so it becomes a little bit more complicated with plumbing and just house design. And so, like, I've entered houses where the bathroom, you have to go through a hallway and then go through the bathroom and then go through the, into the owner's quarters. And so that was kind of odd. Um, so we were looking for something that was a little bit more accessible. And okay. in this case, the builder decided to make four bedrooms, four baths. The question I have, I want to ask you because you're the expert on this. <laughs> on this quote, it says only two, two uh, occupants. My understanding of this law, it's only two occupants. So if you have uh, four people in there, you can't have more than two, and you can only have two. You can only rent out to two people. No, maybe I'm wrong on that. Well, I mean, I guess if the variance conflicts to our bylaw against the boarding house, we, That's right. we wouldn't want to issue a variance that conflicts with that. So I, mean, I guess the real question is how many people are actually living there? My, and, my reading of it is only two, no right. matter what happens. Right, there's two people living there. And they're talking no more than a total. But again, the guests is not going to be there. Yeah. No, they're only allowed two guests. That's it. So why have fed four bedrooms for two guests? Hmm. There's doesn't the, the, doesn't the bylaw is, say the, that Deerfield, there's three, uh, you can have a bed and breakfast up to three rooms? That's, uh, I'm not sure what it means. Because yeah. uh, they, they, you uh, approved two rivers that's over also here in Deerfield just recently, and that has two bedrooms. Yeah. Two to six. Two to six, but it, yeah. but it says you have to include the people that live there. 
you can have six people. If you have five people that live there, you could only put one person in there. You couldn't put two people in there. That's what's confusing when, you, right. when I read this, because if, if I read it one way, it says you can have only two. Then if you read it another way, it says, but you can have up to six. So if you had one person living there, you could put five people in also. So I'm, uh, that's why I'm asking. I'm confused on what, that's, what that means. So that Two Rivers has three people living there, according to what I understand from the last hearing. And then there's yep. two additional rooms that she lets out. So that would make four seven. It's illegal. So that's in violation. It's a boarding house. Right. Correct? But they sell themselves as a bed and breakfast. Yeah, I don't really know what the enforcement or the inspection is. And, and then and, and South I, Deerfield. What I know, you know, is I don't either. all the events that I have the opportunity to attend either. is there's a huge demand for this type of thing. I, I, I would interpret it differently. Say that's what? I would interpret it differently. I don't think it includes the owners. It doesn't include the owners. That's how I interpret it. But. Yeah, there's the Tibetan Inn is another example. They have three rooms. They're down South Deerfield. I don't know if that's permitted as a bed and breakfast, though. It wasn't it was originally a motel. Yeah. Motel. And that's not in the There was a special situation. permit granted to it. I'm not familiar with all the details at this point. But they sell themselves as a bed and breakfast. Well, he did get a special permit, but right. I'm not familiar mm -hmm. with all the details right, right. now. Mm -hmm. But that was probably... Seven, eight years ago? Hmm. See, I was told that that's what it was. I was told what I was said. That's why I was asking by two people. So I think we have to have that clarified. Yeah, I read it. I, I mean, I think, I mean, first off, I'm not voting tonight uh, as an alternate, alternate member, but uh, if I was to vote, I wouldn't be comfortable without meeting the owners of uh, the parents that are going to run this. Uh -huh. And I'm not comfortable with the size um, because I think you know you're going to have the demand to rent out the rooms. Yeah. I think the demand's there. There's no question about that. I mean, just you know, we have a lot of stuff that goes on in Deerfield. Well, the fact that the septic's designed for four bedrooms that means your parents or or whoever's living there is going to have to occupy one of them. So that mm -hmm. only leaves mm -hmm. three. Three. Right. You'll have to stick with the three. Right. Three rooms and then. You said earlier that your parents or whoever's living there at the time would be parking in the garage and then everybody would be up against the garage or in front of it. And that, that's a problem for if you had to get out of the, right. the garage and your guests aren't there, the keys to their car aren't there, or emergency vehicle has to get in, or it's a problem. The, the parking's a big problem for me. Mm -hmm. And then we heard from everybody about parking on the side of the road, the driveway, excuse me, is probably not a good idea. Mm -hmm. So, I have some concerns of the adequate access. The driveway is so small, and with the access to the fire trucks, et cetera, especially if if you're if you've got uh, four cars there besides your parents, mm -hmm. that that's at least five. And your parents probably have two cars. They have one. My yeah. father doesn't drive anymore. Okay, but they have that's five cars, mm -hmm. and uh, you know that's significant and. Um, it's not very wide. The other thing is I have a concern about the, the wetlands, the barriers and what have you, whether or not if any improvements were done. Snow is a big problem. Whether the septic is fine. You know, uh, I'm, I'm basically an alternate member, so I'm going to be like Adam and just mm -hmm. give my advice because we have five Duly qualified people who can vote. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Decker. And I can get out of voting. But yeah. my point is, it's limited access. Um, if somebody was, I would much more be in favor of it if you wanted to rent one or two bedrooms mm -hmm. uh, and not build a unit out in the basement. Mm -hmm. And obviously, that it'd be restricted to owner occupied. Mm -hmm. And I mean, owner occupied, the person lives there all year and right. doesn't go to Germany and leave somebody else babysit the place for... Oh, well, again, that's where we're owners, so... As long as you're a permanent resident, you yeah. can, that would be fine. But if you're not a permanent resident, uh, you know, it's supposed to be owner-occupied. If, if the permit granted, it should be restricted to only owner-occupied. Is your uh, house in Hatfield owner-occupied with your permit for your bed and breakfast there? Yes. So... 
So you, then, you know, that presents an issue. You can't be owner occupied in Hatfield and Deerfield at the same no, time. No, I can't. And that's why my owner, my, I'm, that's my residence. Hatfield. Right. Right. That's my point, sir. Right. Your residence is in Hatfield, so you right. can't be owner occupying in Deerfield. Right. In but if my parents leave uh, the house and I, that's basically my second residence. I see where we're at with this. Anyway, those are my thoughts, and uh, we've uh, had several uh, bed breakfasts been granted. Uh, we've seen people withdraw their applications without prejudice because it didn't look like it was going to pass. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it, it's a it's a purely discretionary thing on the board if they want to buy into your program. Well, with regard to the fire access, we had a report from the fire chief, right? Was there anything listed there that was a concern? Um, he did list list of things for the inspection. I, I, I don't know where, where it went. I didn't read it up, but. So if access is listed there, I don't know that we should be talking about that. I think well, I have concerns about. My, my access and, issue would be more cause for, for EMS, uh, for the ambulance. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's highly likely that you're going to have a medical issue mm. far before you're going to have a fire issue mm. when you bring in extra people, you know. Mm. Like your chances of having a fire between eight houses, mm. you know, if you pick eight houses, you know, chances of one of the eight having an issue are higher than just one, just like mm. eight people, you know. Uh, we actually closed this to comments, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so where I'm sorry, we've already um, taken comments, so we're actually in discussion, just asking questions of the applicant. Well, I, I know you uh, said let's discuss it, but you never officially closed it. Uh, yeah, we did. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> I agree, though, with Mr. Decker about who who owns this. I mean, you've got co-ownership, and I don't. It says own, owner operated bed and breakfast. Mm -hmm. So if you put six people on there, you've got six people on a deed that could run this bed and breakfast. That's basically what we're saying. Correct? If they're on the if they're on the deed, then you could have six people. Am I wrong? Well, Mr. Sadowski, I think that's something that the board has to consider. That's yeah. not that's what he's saying. I don't think that we've made a decision. No, I'm, but I, that's a concern I have is you've got this open-ended who owns it and who's there and... Well, my parents are there. That's... But you said they travel. Yes, they do travel on... I mean, I can't forbid them to travel. I mean, is that... I don't know if that exists in the bylaw that they can't travel, but... Well, that's a, I'll be honest, that's a concern I have. Mm -hmm. I go along with Mr. Decker that uh, we don't know how long they're going to be there. Uh, who enforces this? Um, they may be gone all year long, and it's, it's in there, and it doesn't get enforced. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think that goes back to my concern. We haven't had the opportunity to meet and engage them. That's right. So those, that's my concern. Can we continue to, yep. to can we have another meeting? We, well, we can continue. Covered? We can go to a, you can go to a field mm -hmm. field review mm -hmm. and actually visit the site and see what you see for yourselves mm -hmm. and wonder. You can continue. 
Do we have a, a time frame that we have to do all that? Uh, if the applicant consents to a waiver of the time limits, yeah. uh, then it, there wouldn't be a problem. But I think you only have so many days in which to grant the permit once the application has been filed. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if it's 60 days or 90 or what. I wouldn't want to say for sure. Mm -hmm. But we would want to make sure that we got a waiver from all the applicants as to the waiver of the time limit. To give us time to possibly yeah, visit to or to have the meet your parents, parents, the parents yeah, come meet in your parents. and maybe get a map of par parking mm -hmm. and get yep. just a little bit clearer idea of a few of the things with the sewer or the bylaw. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Wouldn't the parking be predicated on the permit? Like where we want to put the parking versus where the neighbors feel that the parking should be. Well, that the could site differ. visit would show what you want, mm -hmm. and it would also show where your neighbors think it would be best served. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you know we can look at a couple of pictures, but you really can't tell that much. Sure, Mr. Decker, I have a question for you. Um, does the applicant? Do we have to vote on the applicant as presented, as the application as presented for the number of bedrooms, or uh, do we have the ability to amend? We have a, the board has the discretion to approve what you think is in the best interest of the town and treating the applicant fairly. Right. If you think that uh, two would be much more palatable, uh, it could be restricted to two. Um, some people only want one. One of those applications that have been approved had one. And one had four. I, I'm not sure what the other one had. But one was withdrawn. But the point is, it, it's discretionary because it's a special permit. Right. It's, so you can put conditions and you yeah. can change it. And so we have. You can tailor it. And then we also have some time to gather more information. And yep. Yeah. But you should set a date uh, to, to continue the hearing and for a field visit. And, uh, and you shouldn't go up too far, a couple of weeks or something like that, so that you can do your deal and make a decision if you don't, if you don't get the waiver. Mm -hmm. If you get the waiver, you're not going to be in as much of a rush. Okay. Like I said, I'm not voting yep. tonight because yep. we have five duly qualified people here to vote. Would you and your parents be willing to give us a little more time to know what we have to know before we make a decision? I think so, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's very reasonable. Okay. Yeah, there's obviously some issues that we're concerned about, so right. I don't know that you'd want to go to a vote tonight. Mm. Yeah. But it's up to you. Yeah. No, I think uh, I, if a site visit is in order, I would. I don't think there's an issue with that at all. Or better photographs or diagrams sure. or mm -hmm. if that's easier. Yeah, we uh, we weren't very clear on, on what we were supposed to be yeah. presenting. That yeah. was we, mm -hmm. we received the application. The application provided us an outline. And we followed yeah. the outline. So, but yeah, if there's more uh, detailed drawings needed or. Um, layouts or architectural drawings we have those so we can bring those in or if you again depending on how okay, now that the downstairs bathroom is probably not going to happen then it would be nice to see kitchen. what the kitchen. Uh, the kitchen as well we, we know you can't have two kitchens mm -hmm. and um, I'm sorry I, I misspoke bedroom. the downstairs bedroom okay. the downstairs bedroom cannot happen because of the septic design and I think the kitchen makes it a two-family. Right. right. So there's no second kitchen and no downstairs mm -hmm. bedroom. Okay. So if we had an idea what the downstairs was going to end up being, um, that would be easier mm -hmm. for us. Um, and then, of course, the amount of guests in the parking and, and all are concerned, too. And I think it's beneficial to everybody, you, the guests, and this board having, you know, saying it's okay to do something. Mm -hmm. so. Do we need to 
to make a more formal list of what we'd like, or do we? Yeah, why don't we? Yeah, why I was don't we? Say, that might be better than, are you proposing that in lieu of a site visit? As to, I think that would be, easier. my opinion, it would, personally, it'd be easier if you brought us the information than all of us having to be able to get our schedules in order to go and you be there so mm -hmm. that we could look. And sure. you might be thinking too, it will make this list, but when your parents are going to be back in the country and available? Uh, they'll be back in October, beginning of October. First okay, because that will help to help us to set a date. Right, so we'll know how long. And then, uh, I don't know how we officially get this waiver of the time frame, mm. but we would want to make sure that we know how to do that. So. Okay. So for a list, it would be a, um, a layout of the downstairs uh, minus the kitchen and additional bedroom. That wouldn't be of our concern. As long as they're not no, added. no, as long as those things are not there, then right. we don't. Right, so that, we're, we're, right, right. right. If you're so. not changing anything, then we don't, okay. then that does not matter. Okay. Um, Park. Park, parking? Parking. Right. So maybe the, the, a better plot plan. Or yeah. Yeah, a drawing or a sketch of the size of the area in front of the garage where you had mentioned you were going to ask everybody to park when they're staying there. Mm -hmm. What you basically want is a limited site plan. Mm -hmm. Limited you know, site plan. Well, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying it all has to be drawn to scale. No. But no. if you've got some sort of a limited mm -hmm. site plan as to how you want to lay this thing out so people can understand it. What else? Oh, I think we need to run this by the uh, building inspector, who is, I think, David Jansen now, about the plumbing that is existing, because there was a problem on River Road of an apartment, and the building inspector made him pull out all the plumbing that was there, so it couldn't be turned back into an apartment at a later time. So this, I um, was making a list of things we're going to give to him, Right, what we want yeah. in the next meeting. Mm -hmm. So well, I would think the building inspector should talk to him, like the new okay. one. The new, have you? David Jansen. Okay. Regarding everything or regarding? Well, regarding this business with the plumbing, I'm not sure. I and mean, that's what I was told happened. I think he needs to take, since we have concerns, I think, you know, that's what we have a building inspector for, is to take a look at this stuff. So let's get him involved. And you can talk with him and see what he says. Plumbing and septic, or board. Well, plumbing. he would be a, well, the board of health agent, so I don't know. Maybe if you shoot, uh, Kill Pat Crow email and ask for yeah. both, that that office can handle it. Or, I don't know. Ask for both. The input of the board of health inspector, Mr. Kalshevsky, and the building inspector. Because I think he was asking that he meet with the building inspector. Uh, either somebody, he has to take, I think he needs to take a look okay. since we have existing plumbing in there. And I, my understanding was that it had to be removed or well, the house couldn't be sold. You got uh, something on your limited site plan as to where the snow is going, where it gets plowed, et cetera? Basically, get the permit, the Conservation Commission permits to make sure everything's in compliance with the previous orders or conditions. If any. Would you say that again? The conservation permit? Yeah, previous orders of condition, et cetera. Is that something they'd already have? Would that be in that file? Mail it's in this mail. file here. Yeah. There's, there's correspondence yeah. if anybody wants to take a look. We're trying to get a list together what we'd like them to bring to the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Anything else? We had adequate access to wetlands, seasonal, and the, uh, the snow. Mm -hmm. the Parking spots, uh, drawing of the property. Parking, septic driveway. No. Board of Health, building inspector. Pick a date, Frank. 
Okay. In October, when I'll right. be back. All your parents are returning when in October? Um, I, they told me the first week, so let me just check the calendar here. I believe it's around the 6th, 5th or 6th. I need a real calendar to put my hands on. I'm going to wait for this to follow up. Meeting on the fourth and one on the ninth. The eighteenth. That I know of right now. A limited. Maybe Thursday the eighteenth. Thursday the eighteenth. Thursday the eighteenth. Okay with everybody. That okay with you, Carl? Yes. Thursday the 18th at 7 p.m. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> Here. Here. Yep. So we need to make a motion for a continuance to the 18th then? Is that what we do? Yes. I so move. Everybody in favor of a continuance till the 18th? Second it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Move to close the meeting. Thank you, Dr. Richard. Mr. Decker, now where did we get that clarified about the number of people in the house? I'm confused. Yeah, take some what research. Is I think there's an argument. What's up, Bruce? Can I ask a question? Try. Under what provision are you considering? The, well, the, the question we had was that the, where, the wording of that is kind of ambiguous. It says six and then two. My interpretation was you can only have a total of six. Two can be non-residents. Non That's it. Only two non-family members. Yeah, well, that's one part. I'm talking about I'm assuming you're leaning in part as far as the allowance of that purpose. Because the charge specifically says if you rent over two people, it becomes a boarding house. A boarding house is specifically not a lot in the far end. And what was on TV is when they were going out with examples, I had a couple of this, I wasn't sure that all of a sudden you were But anyway, what he was citing for references were not the permits that were issued in an RM district. And they are getting this. I'm not opposed to anybody trying to make a dollar for this, but what you do is you can open that door and you can get a bunch of closer. Oh, is that 79, that River Road one's not RA? Levine's? Uh, that I don't know. You don't? These things are still on. I'll talk to you about it after. Is anybody up I got it right here. We have another mm -hmm. permit that, that was the 754 River Road. So we are still in the meeting. We're still yeah, in the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. That got a little confusing. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I, I, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I, 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 no, I know it was could, a little confusing. No. Let's just. I, I yeah, think here it is here. It's, 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 it's a whole yeah. spot. Yeah. Yeah. Special permit. That's what we said. We're done with that. I don't know. I mean, Bruce, right there. Special permit. My just question is to the board is we need to find out what it means. What does that mean? I'm sorry. So, oh, was there any okay. other correspondence in that file? You know, for the board today. And can we? I have a lot of basic questions. Like, can we yeah. take these things home and read them? Or, are yeah. we only allowed to look at these things when no, we're here? You can here? take them home. Okay. Let's make sure you charge it out if you take it. To so the, tell Pat to, what I what I take. Yes. So, so we'll leave it here for tonight, and yeah. we just come to her and say. Put an out card in the folder, and or mm -hmm. just look or at make, it in the or in make, the conference room, or, or whatever. make some copies because. I, Things walk away and they don't never want come that. back. Okay. So no, we won't leave with it tonight, but we can come yeah. to Pat. Because I think there might be more answers in here than we realize. Oh, there's a lot of stuff there. You, you need five or six hours to go through. Yeah. Hmm. 
Um, well, I did ask on the agenda uh, Mr. Chair if um, these documents could be scanned and emailed to us prior mm -hmm. to the meeting. That would be excellent. So I, I was told that that was not past practice. So you just can't discuss them. I, I understand. Yeah, right. I understand. But I feel like it's. it's I, we should come equipped with that knowledge. I, and I think it would. We would be more efficient. Well, Absolutely. So yes, the, the appli application, in some cases, has been scanned, and we've got an email with it. And we did with this one, but it was one page. Right. It was it just that, it was just that, the, where it was on the map. Right. And that that wasn't the full information. Like even having mm -hmm. five or six pages that were right there would have been. Well, I stopped good. today and had her pull that file. Which was great. But and I, I had mean, to pull the others that had been granted, mm -hmm. so you could see what has already transpired. Mm -hmm. And what would just Practices yeah. moving forward, if mm -hmm. we could somehow make that. Mm -hmm. Something, anyway. even if it's okay, not well, past well, practice, if it could be future practice. I don't know who we talk to. Well, no, yeah. Okay, why don't we move along? Uh, there might be some people that have some other business. So number three on our agenda is to vote for a new chair and a new clerk of this board. So that's I what we need to do next. Job, but I, don't I nominate Frank. I, <laughs> I nominate Frank. You nominated in, him already. In the I last second. hour and 12 minutes, I've known Frank. He, he's never let me down. <laughs> <laughs> I second. <laughs> yes, All what? in favor? Will, will you take it? Okay. In favor. <laughs> yeah, somebody has to do it. Yeah. And um, not that I have all kinds of experience doing it. This is only the second time. Um, You're doing good. Yeah. I'll um, do my best. You're very calm. I'll do my best. Okay, uh, how about a new clerk? I think you were looking at her. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're clearly picking out the only woman. Yeah. Oh. I'm just saying. You've got good yeah. Look, I can read your writing. Horrible. Nominate, <laughs> I nominate Kathy yes. as our clerk. I suck it. Okay. All in favor? All in favor? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, did we get an email? Do we have any mail to review? So this means I need to rewatch this meeting yeah. because I didn't take notes. <laughs> yes. That'll be fun. Okay. <laughs> Just these here, Frank. That's all I see. I okay. Don't see <laughs> this says ZBA correspondence. Yeah. Is that it? That's what you're going to look at. That's the new mail. <laughs> oh, I didn't see this. They should have put my name tag down there. Frank's over here. That's Okay, so we have a letter from the architects, Deerfield Planning Board, and ZBA uh, in regards to the Dollar General store. Are there multiple copies there? Yes, there's more than one copy. So rather than read it out loud, why don't we just take a minute to read it over? Let's see. Okay. Well, it's got to go that direction. Nice. Everybody got a copy? I believe so. Oh, I did read this. Yeah, I've seen this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I read, didn't we read this was in the newspaper. Yeah. Oh, this was in the newspaper. Okay, well, we can read this and take this home. Can we take this yeah, home? we can take okay. this home. I received this by you. Make a note you took it under advice. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. in my notes yes. that I'm yep. supposed to be taking. Okay. And we also have a letter. Really qualified. <laughs> we have yeah. a letter here to the Zoning Board of Appeal Appeals from Dr. Amy Gazin Schwartz, 3B Evans Lane. This is in regards to the proposed Dollar General store on Greenfield Road. Having reviewed the site plans for the proposed Dollar General store and attended three planning board meetings about it, I still have concerns about whether this use is appropriate for the location, concerns about traffic, and concerns about its impact on the neighborhood. I live on Evans Lane, and my neighbors on the other side of Evans Lane are direct abutters of this property. Furthermore, the abutting land is owned by the Mill Village East Condominium Association, on which I am a member. This parcel is the only parcel in the strip of commercially zoned land running either side of routes 5 and 10 that is surrounded on two sides by residential neighborhoods. The large store proposed for this parcel is out of keeping with the neighborhood. The size of the store requires that the developers get a special permit from the ZBA. The zoning regulations about this permit state 5320 criteria special permits may be granted by the special permit granting authority upon its written determination 
The benefits of the proposed use outweigh its detrimental impacts on the town and the neighborhood. In view of the particular characteristics of the site and of the proposal in relation to that site, in addition to any criteria set forth in specific provisions of this bylaw, the determination shall include consideration of the, each of the following. And she cites different, um, different um, numbers. Social, economic, or community needs which are served by the proposal, traffic flow and safety, including parking and loading, adequacy of utilities and other public services, neighborhood character and social structures, impacts on the natural environment, potential fiscal impact, including impact on town services, tax base, and employment. It is hard for me to see how the benefits of a Dollar General store at this site outweigh its detrimental impacts on the town and neighborhood. The products sold at this store are readily available at the three convenience stores located just a couple of miles south on Greenfield Road, the New Cumberland Farms, and the two Circle K stores, as well as the new local Cheslick's Market in South Deerfield, the numerous farm stands, including Atlas, which is just across the street from the proposed site. The stores will not provide significant employment for the town, being usually staffed by five or fewer people. It does not seem to serve any community need well. The detrimental impacts on neighborhood and town may be significant. A Dollar General store at this location along a main access road to Deerfield does not fit with the character of any other businesses in the area. It detracts from the rural historical appeal of Deerfield, our main attraction for visitors. The site is located at a busy intersection, which is, on this, which is the site of already numerous traffic accidents. The developers make what seem to be contradictory claims about its impact on traffic. On the other hand, they say it will not impact traffic because it is not a destination. People are more likely to stop in when they are passing on their way to somewhere else. However, this would seem to mean that the highest number of stops would be when there is the most traffic, thus affecting the traffic flow on Greenfield Road just when it is busiest, when turning cars close to dangerous intersection and a stretch of road posted at 50 miles per hour could cause most disruption and danger. A formal traffic study should have, should certainly be undertaken to determine the, the degree of this impact. The over 9,000 square foot store, apparently about twice the size of the new Cumberland Farms, and its parking and driveway are likely to impact the groundwater in the area by creating significant impermeable cover. In addition, the store will have to install a septic system. The area is already quite wet, particularly where it abuts Mill Village East condominium lands, and I am concerned that any rise in the groundwater levels may have a detrimental impact on the three septic systems and leach fields we have installed on the abutting land. Our systems were designed assuming the groundwater conditions would remain the same. The developer stormwater analysis states per published USDA NRCS soils maps the property exclusively contains 223A soils categorized as SIO silt loam 0 to 3 percent slopes. On site evaluations and geotechnical evaluations show the parent material soil to be a fine sandy loam and a silt loam. According to a hydrologic soil group of C, was used in the watershed analysis. This information is provided in appendices B and H of this report. It is not very clear why the USDA soil category was not used. Given the sensitivity of the location relative to neighboring septic systems, it is important that an independent, detailed specialist hydrogeological study be conducted that takes into account the impact of development on neighboring septic systems as well as on the property in question, and can discuss whether appropriate standards were used in the stormwater treatment design. Here it is difficult to imagine anything but a detrimental impact on, of the proposed store. It is surrounded by residential neighborhoods 
on two sides in traffic, lighting, trash disposal, delivery trucks, will all impose on our enjoyment of our homes. Even the relatively low impact lighting proposed would be significant if it was visible from your bedroom window. Even with the proposed eight foot fence and tree planting, the 16 foot high building will be visible from our houses and from the roadways. Even careful disposal of trash and garbage will attract rodents. Litter is likely to increase on the surrounding roadways. Noise and pollution of delivery trucks will be noticeable. An unattended parking lot at night is a potential hazard. We are concerned about the impact of this particular use at this site on our property values. Since a decrease in property value will also affect real estate tax revenue to the town, the town should also consider this negative economic impact. Development at this site has already impacted the natural environment through cutting of numerous trees along Greenfield Road and the very large stacks of brush which remain on the site from that cutting. Large areas of impervious surfaces, building, roadways, parking will likely impact the water table levels. Litter, air pollution from delivery trucks, customers' automobiles, noise from air conditioning and ventilation systems will all contribute to negative impacts on the local natural environment. Potential fiscal impact. While this store might contribute some taxes to the town, it is worth considering what costs the town will incur in serving and managing the impacts of the store. Further, a store of this type may negatively affect local businesses that sell similar goods. In order to adequately assess traffic and septic water runoff impacts, detailed specialist studies must be conducted. At a minimum, independent engineering studies of the hydro hydrogeology and traffic must be undertaken. Studies of the potential economic impact on local businesses, town tax revenue, tourism, and property values should also be considered. Such studies should not rely on previous studies submitted by the applicants or experts suggested by the applicants, but it should be independent. While we recognize these parcels are zoned for commercial use, I believe the many detrimental impacts described in this letter make the that make a Dollar General store an inappropriate development for this location. Sincerely yours, Amy Gazin Schwartz. I suggest you place it on the phone. Okay. And is it just addressed to us or is it addressed to it's, the planning It's board? addressed to the select board, the planning board, and the zoning board of appeals. So we don't have to send them a copy because they already No, have. they already have. So it'll become part of the file from this meeting? Or right? regular correspondence file. Well. Right, okay. Okay. All right, what else you got in there? We've got some end of month reports. Can I ask a point of information? Certainly. Um, if, the, if the letter from Mr. Coon is not read into the record, does it just go in a file? The letter from who? Uh, the architect, uh, John Kuhn, which everyone is going to read separately. Would that have to be introduced at the next meeting so that it goes into the public record? The one the table, so it's part of the public record. It just didn't get rid of it. Okay. I'm just but once, once, once something in a meeting gets the table, it's public record. The one we each It'll go in the correspondence file as well. Yeah. But I mean, it is a public record. Good. Yeah, it's just a point of clarification. That's yeah, right. the only reason I read this one is I only have one copy. No, I understand. So, Thank okay. you. And so you're familiar with, with the letter that you're speaking of? Yes, I am. Okay. So, yeah. I assume you drafted it. No. no. <laughs> Mr. Kuhn is a very intelligent person. I assume he was mm -hmm. quite able to write his own letter. Okay. End of month reports. August 2018. These are just funds and expenditures that we can look at afterwards. June, just dollars. Okay, well, these are things I can pass around when, when okay. we're finished. Mm -hmm. Okay, are, so then lastly, does any, anybody else have any other business they want to bring before the board? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Seth? Uh, I was asking if there's any other business. I have one, just okay. want to reiterate, if 
Frank as the new chair. Mm -hmm. Could you speak possibly with Pat about a new process of trying to get information in advance? Sure. I guess I will. Yep. Okay. Yep. Just, I mean, not excessive, but just things mm. that would be right. super yeah, good I to it's have familiarity with before we come here. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's always available. But, you know, it's always sure. available. Yeah. But if it, yeah. Yeah. Which, which means it's available. You mean like if it's emailed or are we come in and sign out a copy or is that what you wanted to know how we get it or well, I'd okay. love it if it could get sent to us right. but okay. if we know that there's if that's impossible for some mm -hmm. reason okay um, I can ask her just some, so some, it's like something like that big file you know yeah you know, that, well, that would is, be available yes yeah, so that's obviously but, that would but, be emailed, but it but seemed like there were a few available. like the letter from the fire fire department right, yeah. or some of the other things might have been Sure. Yeah, it comes in. Kind of I think all of this stuff was used. Pretty close. These small folders were pretty useful. That you know. So maybe if it's so much, then maybe the process that you come up with with her okay. is just all right. you know let us know that there's stuff that we can come check out. Right. Or, mm -hmm. Okay. And then I can email everybody, or yeah. she can email everybody yeah. that she's got stuff mm -hmm. that we can look at. Okay. Well, we can't email each between other. ourselves. Right. Right. Otherwise, right. we're into an open right. meeting violation. Right. right. Oh, right. Bruce. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sorry to I. Yeah. Wasn't sure what you were asking. Oh, oh I wasn't sure what you're oh, okay. looking amongst it. Oh, actually, okay. one more thing. Are you going to check with Pat too on the waiver? Yes. To make yes. sure that we're all yes. in line with the bylaw. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Of time. Okay. okay, Bruce. So my comment was. Oh. Okay. We're ready. Okay. My comment was, I'm assuming you're looking at this bed and breakfast based on this chart mm -hmm. for a special mm -hmm. program. Uh, has anybody read 2243 that goes along with that chart? And, and if not, I will read it for you, that's if that's all right. Please do so. Okay. Uh, borders and single-family dwelling. The renting of rooms and or furnishing of board to more than two persons in a single-family dwelling by the owner-occupant thereof shall be, permitted by, uh, shall be a permitted accessory use. The renting of rooms and or furnishing of board to more than two persons, but not more than six, in a single family dwelling by the owner occupant thereof shall be deemed a boarding house subject to provisions of section 2230. Now, 2230 is your chart, and 2230 specifically does not allow boarding houses in a residential agricultural something. Yeah. So, you know, going along with I think it, it was Bernie. Bernie yeah. had asked mm -hmm. why, you know, uh, you know why you need three or four rooms. So mm -hmm. I wasn't sure. It did sounded like some of the conversation was a little vague on that. Whether twenty two forty three had been read so that, and there again, listen to the presenter. It sounds like he's asking a boarding house to be deemed a bed and breakfast. So, and as I said, I'm not against anybody trying to make a dollar. I think that's great for the economy, but by the same token, you don't want to set precedents, and that's that's my only comment on that. So, yeah, but what if you had just one person in each bedroom? What's that? What if you had one person in each bedroom? If they're if he's renting, if he's renting to it, and if you add, no, it doesn't say in each bedroom. It says a total of uh, two more than two. Two to six. Two two renters. I, I read it like four times today. Is that twenty-two forty-three, and gone back. But I, I think I mean we we have other approved bed and breakfasts. The question is if they're in if the seven the one that was approved, the latest one that we have here is at seven fifty-four River Road, and I know there's a commercial district that goes somewhat past the rail yard. But where does it stop? Because you're saying that it's in agricultural, residential agricultural. And that's what you're talking about. There is that. So, and, it, and if that other one got by, then it should she never have that. Yeah, right. she's, she's close. She's close. I know yeah. she's close. Yeah. So I guess. So, but it's uh, anyway. I think it's just actually it's just, it's just, it's, it doesn't say it's just she more than two renters. It says more than two persons. Okay. Thank you. I don't know. I mean, I was good to have you refer to. Well, they're here for the the thirty part. Yes. Did you wear your house that we talked about tonight? I don't know. Can I make a motion to adjourn so we can shut? Okay. All right. Second. Second. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 Aye.